welcome back. I am very, very excited about today's episode, and this is indirectly related to Lucy. Lucy is one of our three dogs, and she does not like the camera. I guess not. Well, it's probably because she knows about one of our future episodes, which is going to be how to empty your dog's anal sacs, and we've talked about it, and she does not like that idea, but, um, and she's really worried that she's going to be the model. So um, I'm gonna put her on the ground so I don't get accused of pet abuse. And um, <laughs> so today's topic is going to be how to make your own disinfectant, which also works for pet allergens, as well as a wide variety of allergens. So the reason why I'm so excited about today's episode is because this particular solution is pennies to make, it's something you can do at home. It contains salt and water, and it is almost as effective, if not more, than bleach. And growing up with a microbiologist as a father, I grew up hearing that bleach was the best disinfectant, better than any of the quaternary ammonium disinfectants out there, which are actually very, very poisonous and not good for our health. Be bleach was always the disinfectant of choice and knowing that there is something that we can make using salt and water that will not make your clothes turn white if you've got dark colored clothes on and also will not make metal rust, uh, that's pretty cool. Also, this solution is safe to put on your vegetables. It's safe to use as an oral rinse depending on the concentration. Uh, I just read a study that in dentistry they are actually using this uh, for irrigation uh, to replace chlorhexidine, which was used previously uh, as an anti antimicrobial agent. It's used to wash wounds uh, in veterinary medicine, and I use it in my shower if I want an antibacterial soap. I'll just use it to spray to augment the cleaning power of my soap. I use it to clean bathrooms. I use it to freshen the air, and cystic fibrosis patients have been using this for years to help improve their air quality as well. So how do we make this? You do need a battery cell. And I was watching a YouTube video on how to make a battery cell and it was a grad student in his little dark lab and uh, he had two batteries with wires and then salt and water and a beaker and he was making his own solution, which was really cool. But um, fortunately for the rest of us, there are vessels that you can make and there is equipment that you can purchase such as this eco one little hydro hypochlorous vessel that will make the solution for you so the solution we're making is called hypochlorous acid and it is what is in saltwater pools and it is a again highly effective against virus and bacteria and uh, it is, particularly during COVID times, uh, great to spray on your produce, all of your groceries. And the beauty of this solution is it turns to saline, which is what it's made of, salt and water, uh, shortly after you spray it on. Now the one, really the only side effect or bad, I shouldn't even say side effect, the only con, bad thing about this solution is that because it turns to salt water so quickly, you can't expose it to air or else it loses its effectiveness. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, I choose to put it in a spray bottle and the second that I make it, I quickly put the lid on uh, to keep it away from air. Also, I make it often. So I have a spray bottle that is small enough that I know that I will use it in a week's time and a week is pretty much that time frame that I, I can use it and it's still effective. And I have test strips and they come with the, uh, the, the vessel here. So you can test to make sure that it's still effective and you can figure out uh, considering the temperature in your house and uh, how often you're using it and exposing it to air. And you can figure out how long it will last in your conditions. So the um, only thing you need to do then is to have some salt. Uh, I use filtered water, have a spray bottle ready and have a have some sort of uh, equipment to help you make this. And there are many ones on the market, a lot more than there used to be. 
And incidentally, if you've heard of electrostatic sprayers that are being used in medical offices and medical offices and dental offices between patients, more than likely they're spraying this solution. So it's it's fantastic. The only other ingredient that you'll need is vinegar. And once you make your solution, you will need to add about a teaspoon of vinegar to your solution and that will help stabilize the pH and also give it a little bit longer uh, shelf life. So we will go ahead and get started with making our own solution, which is very, very easy. And if you purchase one of these, you can figure it out. It's not like you need a, a YouTube tutorial, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it because we're here. So you plug in your vessel, your equipment. I keep calling it a vessel. I don't know what else to call it. So I plug it in here and then we'll see the light turn on. And then I have a measuring spoon that comes with my Eco One and I don't get any product endorsements, but I do like this um, equipment. So, and I measure one uh, of these spoons of, of salt and I just use kosher salt. I don't want sea salt. I don't want anything uh, I want it as simple as possible. And so I measure one teaspoon of, or one of these spoons of salt. It's not a teaspoon. And sometimes I add it a little bit, a little bit more for one and a half. So it's a little bit more concentrated. And then I just press, uh, there are three uh, levels of concentration and time that is spent um, during the cycle. And you can, I don't know if you can see the light and the electrolysis going on. And another option too, if you wanna to make it more concentrated is to run it twice. And then you can also, uh, and then you have a more concentrated solution. There is a product on the market and I forget what it's called, but you can actually buy it in a gallon bottle. And supposedly they have a shelf life that is six months or longer. I'm not sure what technology they're using to extend that shelf life, but basically you pour out a, a small amount into a bottle and then you add water. So, which is pretty cool, but it's also pretty pricey. Um, this uh, unit costs, if I remember correctly, around $150. And I've used it, I've had it for two years now, and I use it probably every, every week. And especially during COVID when it's impossible to find bleach, any sort of bathroom cleaner. I went to Target, well, I was shopping online and, and couldn't find any bathroom cleaners. So I thought, well, maybe if I go to the store, I'll find that some bathroom cleaner, and they don't even have an aisle anymore of bathroom cleaners or cleaning products. So I'm, there must be um, a shortage. And so this is just a really nice uh, thing to have on hand to, uh, to clean. So um, once this is finished, I am going to um, pour it into my little bottle, which I keep by the lavatory. And we have a rule at our house, everybody has to spray this after they use it. And I made that rule, since I'm cleaning the lavatory right now during COVID. And then um, I have another spray bottle, one that I keep in the kitchen. And uh, we use it if we're using any meat products or again to spray produce. I just put them all in the, the sink and spray everything down, wait about five minutes, and then you don't need to rinse them off with water, but because theoretically there's a little bit of a salt residue, you can uh, rinse those off. And then I keep, uh, keep another one in our upstairs bathroom. Okay, our chemical reaction is complete. We have a blinking light and sound. So, and I can smell it is done. It smells like chlorine. And so I'm going to pour, unplug the mixture, or unplug the kettle, and then go ahead and keep the lid on while I'm pouring. I'm gonna pour into my cute little lavatory bottle. Leave some room for the vinegar. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the vinegar while I have it open. So this is a tiny bottle. You really can't pour too much. I poured in about, oops, eyeballed about a half a teaspoon. And then put the lid on tightly lavatory bottle done. And then we, I will pour the kitchen bottle here. And a 
again, leave a little bit of rim at the top for the vinegar. And I put about a teaspoon in. And then lid on tight and then I shake. And Ego One includes chlorine testing strips so you can test to see how much chlorine ion is in there because that is what is killing the bacteria the agent that's killing the bacteria. And so with your testing strips, you get a range here, a guide, and you can see that um, as long as you are, as long as you're within these two in the middle, you are effective and you've got a good batch. And I'm pretty much right there. And I only ran it one cycle, so if I would have ran it two, I definitely would have been on the far end here. So we've got a good batch, and if it's ever in question, you wanna check the stability of your product, after a week, after two weeks, you can conduct your own little experiment using these test strips to see how long it lasts in your house. So now you know how to make hypochlorous acid. And again, there are many, many uh, different systems on the market, and uh, some are smaller, and they're gonna be less expensive typically. Uh, but this is a really, really cool, piece of equipment to have in your house, especially during these times. So take care, be safe, and we'll see you next time.